Shout out to SB Storage and Towing for rescuing Gold Phoenix. Uncle Rodney's come to visit. What's up, everybody? It's Mike with Monkey Fab. So, my feelings is April 2020, 20, can just go eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> worst, worst month ever. So, uh, told you we were done with the, the Phoenix. Psych. That. I made an honest attempt to do so. I mean, I've already started working on the Volvo. Uh, you can see we got the uh, whole dash ripped out. And uh, my plans with this was to, I'm gonna pull out the whole air conditioning system because it's not enough to keep up with uh, Houston, this uh, 20 something year old system. We're gonna hook this up with uh, a vintage air system. They'll be a lot more compact and a lot uh, more able to keep up with the conditions here so that's why i had this ripped out and i even i even ah oh, it's locked but i even started taking the stuff out of the engine bay and doing all the stuff that we have to do to get this ready for the swap so obviously the phoenix my neighbor's got a new goat they're really chatty so forgive me but uh the phoenix you guys want to see the goats? I'm sure you do. Hi, you guys are going to be on YouTube. Hey! So here's the new goats. <laughs> the mini sheep. Go Sugar. Inside. Sugar the mini sheep. Baby goat. Pregnant mama goat. And you guys have already seen Tip T tip and Tippin. So, uh, yeah, new goats. More farm animals. Here's Bob. He got a he got a bath today. Look how good you look, Bob. You are styling. Get going this mullet. It's growing out nice. So yeah, back to car stuff. So obviously, so obviously the Phoenix heard me <laughs> speaking about being done with the project and uh, didn't like did that work and didn't like the idea of me being done with her. And as I was driving it to the post office, it made some ticky, ticky, ticky sounds. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's not good. And it's coming from the bell housing kind of area. So I looked underneath there and I had originally put one of those flex bellows. I'll show you guys the flex bellows. Cause I've seen these, I've seen people say good things about them. I've seen people say bad things about them. You know, if you have to have a flex joint, you should have this, uh, yada, yada, yada. But, uh, these guys. So I added one of these in there and uh, I noticed it blown apart, which is fine, no big deal. Uh, I just wanted to try it, see what it was like. If it worked for me, uh, it, it didn't. So now I know to not recommend those to people, but uh, I saw it blew apart. So I thought, well, maybe that's just uh, exhaust leak, you know, coming out that pipe right there, high pressure stuffies, uh, I hope. So I took it apart and did a whole, uh, just replaced it, straight piped it. Can you guys see it? Right now? And took it out, started it up, sounded good. Took it out, once the oil got warmed up, ticky, ticky, tickies, uh, put my head underneath there. And yeah, it's obviously a rod bearing has come apart. Don't know why, don't know how, but uh, it does mean that this has to come out. And then, oh, by the way, it held yesterday and the brand new 4Runner, first new car I've bought in 15 years, uh, got held damaged. <laughs> so this month just sucks, man. It just goes like that, it goes like that, right guys? So yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think this is kind of what you get for getting a little bit too fancy. I shouldn't have. I should have just went with the old uh, Iron 48 or Iron 53 instead of all this fancy aluminum stuff. And uh, maybe I'd be avoiding these problems. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know what happened. Don't know what caused it. Uh, theories. Uh, 
maybe the oil got thin. I, I had, uh, you know, I'm running E and I hadn't changed the oil, but I've only put like maybe three or four gas tanks, three or four tanks of gas through the engine. Uh, but maybe the oil got thin and uh, just wasn't doing its job. Uh, maybe I had a little bit too much timing in the map. Uh, maybe it was that rod uh, that I replaced and I didn't spend a lot of time checking the rod bearings. Uh, maybe it's a, a, a consortium of all of the above. Maybe it's some of the above, maybe it's none of the above, I don't know. But what I do know is this has got to come out uh, and get torn apart. It's always fun tearing down engines that have been destroyed. <laughs> now, I do have a friend that runs a, uh, a shop and they do this kind of thing and they'd probably give me a deal. Modern air, Airflow Dynamics, you should check them out. They do great work. Um, but they're busy right now and I don't want to bug them while they're busy. If they were not busy, then I would throw the business their way and just have them rebuild it. And I understand that that probably costs four times more than whatever, but sometimes you help friends out and whatever. Uh, but what I'll probably, and I have that six liter that we built sitting in the garage that was going to go into the Volvo. Um, but it's not really needed for the Volvo because I'm not going to put enough tire under it that it'll need that, that will justify that engine. So I've been kind of going back and forth with putting the six liter into here. Uh, it's a rectangle port, so it would take a little bit of stuff to make it all work out. I guess it's just the intake, swapping the intake. Um, this turbo, the billet 75 or 78, 75 with a three inch exhaust, it's already kind of like tapped. So again, I wouldn't be really getting the full benefit of that engine either. So I could put a bigger turbo in it, then I have to redo everything and I'm not really feeling that. I might just put the six, two, the six liter in the Volvo and just run it in A. <laughs> I don't know, don't know. That'd probably still be more power than, <laughs> than what the Volvo can handle. But uh, yeah, what I do know is I gotta pull the drivetrain out of this thing and the engine out and everything off of the engine and yeah, so I'm going to get busy doing that, and we're back to the Phoenix. Sorry, guys. I really wanted to switch it up, but we'll try to make this quick. I like quick. Maybe you just go get a Junker 5.3, throw it in there, and be done. Then the tune should be all good, and I don't know. I don't know. You guys, you guys, let me know. Let me know what you think. Anyway. Terran engines out. Okay, okay, just a quick overview. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details and filming me and doing the time lapse and all that crap, but basically it's not too terribly hard. I have to pull out the exhaust because it's in the way of the the drive shaft. The drive shaft comes out. Uh, once the drive shaft's out, then we pull the uh, the lines, disconnect the torque converter, drop the uh, cross member, unbolt it from the uh, engine, and then the transmission comes out. I like to do that just because it's easier to get the engine in and out. Here's the uh, the pipe. This is where they have the flex bellow right here, and uh, we just cut that busted thing out and welded this guy in. See a little little wide. I had to I had to gap the metal to get this to slide over and clear, and then slide back in. And uh, when I did, that was just a bit of a gap, so we did a little little walkie cup stuff um yeah so uh once once the transmission's out i'll just you know disconnect the stuff from the engine down here drain the fluids and and then we can go to the top and disconnect all that stuff pull off all the turbo and the exhaust the intake and it'll be ready to pluck out so not 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 bad i did this before last time we had a the rod knock and uh it was like a day's job so 
It's not gonna do itself. Here we go. So like a couple hours later, transmission's out. Give you the rundown, what we got. So, um, dropped the exhaust out that I needed to drop. This guy can just kind of hang out. It's not hurting anything. And uh, got the drive shaft off, the exhaust overhang piece, the cross member, all the stuff that was up there. Boy, I tell you what, this little cable, there's a couple notes I need to make to myself. The first note is there's no need to put five bolts into an LS swap. Just use the four on the sides. It's probably enough for the shitty little amount of horsepower you're making. Uh, and then this thing was like all tangled up in my transmission. It got tangled up in there like twice. So maybe note to self move this guy up and out of the way next time. But uh, yeah, I mean, everything uh, was relatively easy. Like I said, it only took a couple hours. So it only took a couple hours to get to this point. Oh, it's a lot of white head uh, where the, all of the under stuff is disconnected. The water's drained. You know, I threw away some oil containers and now I don't have anything to put oil in. So I'm gonna have to go buy a, a oil <laughs> container. Uh, and yeah, I still gotta drain the oil. Everybody's chatty today. Did I tell you guys I watched Bob? Look how good Bob looks. Look how handsome you are, Bob. Oh, you know it, huh? Get that water. <laughs> he tries to itch, but he can never leak anything. So, uh, yeah, I got to, um, I have a visitor. So I still have to uh, do the top end, pull the turbo off, the intake, all the exhaust stuff. And, uh, hi Bob, you look so nice. You got a bath, you were so filthy before. Look at you, buddy. <laughs> Are you gonna bite my ear? So, uh, yeah, the top end. I'll do that tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, and and that's not too terribly painful. I did a pretty good job building this whole thing, the kit. Uh, it's not it's not a great job, but it's a good job because everything is pretty easy to get in and out. Um, yeah. So that's about it for now and I'll come back and next time you see us we'll be ripping the uh, get the cherry picker out and pull the engine out of here so me and Bob are gonna call it a night right Bob right Bob <laughs> hey everybody big day uh, the new engine is in new uh, it is like 100, I think it's like 120,000 miles. Uh, I know you're supposed to get over 200,000, but it seemed uh, these Gen 4 engines don't have as many miles on them as the, uh, as the older ones do. So we got one, uh, had it just, I went on eBay and got it. I could have got a cheaper deal here in town if I had the time to chase after it and all that good stuff. But because it was 58X, uh, that kind of limits things and it makes it a little, just a little bit tougher uh you know it's just more time more of a time saver which is a money saver in the long run than just to order the thing off of ebay so i did that it shipped to my local shipping port and we have to go pick that up today so that's exciting uh this guy we got the uh oil filter i finally got some oil things and we use our little slicer down there i still got another oil filter i can cut one open and show you guys but the remnants of it ugly so i was hoping <laughs> you always hope but uh yeah that was you guys can see that the light and the camera is catching it that was what was in between the filter after we chopped it open and uh the other one filters the turbo line like the other i have uh, remote filter because I tapped off the front of the galley for the turbo feed and I knew that that was unfiltered it was just coming out the pump so I put a remote filter in there so hopefully uh, hopefully that filter did its job and the turbo is still good it'll still spooly spooling when it was ticky ticking so um, hopefully still in good shape and all we gotta do is just change this uh, long block out but I think I'll keep these heads we'll look at the heads that's got on it and if uh, hopefully we can save this camshaft and 
the heads because they got the springs in them. If we can do that, and we'll probably mug those head gaskets because they don't have that many miles on them and respray them and put them on the engine when we do the head swap. And it should be uh, should be relatively low budget, although I spent way too much on the motor. I'm not going to tell you guys what I spent because I'm ashamed of it. But uh, overall, it was probably, a time, like I said, a time saver is a money saver. So let's go pick up the engine. We'll get in the old uh, terrible Dodge and... Uh, head downtown and get a new engine for the Phoenix. It's not a Nova. <laughs> Somebody nice nova to me today and I felt like the, it's ma'am. <laughs> it's not a Nova. It's a Phoenix. So uh, let's go guys. Oh my God, it's so bright. It's so hot. It's got to be 90 degrees. So we're here at the, uh, I probably shouldn't say her name just in case. But uh, yeah, we got one, one, five, three to uh, look, there's uh, something and uh, not much to look at, but hey, we got an engine. Hopefully we'll be good. We'll take a look when we get home and uh, yeah, another hour's drive back home Ugh, through Houston traffic. So bad, it's so bad. 